start with Politico's Adam Wren, the author of the Importantville newsletter on Indiana politics. Adam, what are you hearing from your sources uh, about this uh, startling incident in Pennsylvania Saturday night? Yeah, it's awful to talk about the political implications so soon after something uh, so terrible in the American uh, civic life happened. Uh, but yet this incident is clearly galvanizing support for former President Donald Trump. I spoke with uh, Representative Jim Banks, who's speaking on Tuesday uh, at the Republican National Convention. And he said now more than ever, uh, you know, the former president is... Uh, is America's president, that he has support from across the country. Uh, you know, at the Indiana Democratic Party convention on Saturday evening, we saw former Democratic Party chair and, and a contributor to the show, Robin Winston, uh, stop the proceedings and decry the violence that happened. And so I think uh, as divisive as a time as this is in, in American politics, that there that there is some consensus that that, that the violence is wrong. And, you know, politically, this this does help President Trump. He has said that he could be shot, um, that he could shoot somebody rather on Madison Avenue uh, and, and still be politically ascendant. And he never at least publicly considered the possibility that it could be him who was shot. And, and it's actually, you know, politically benefiting him right now. And we'll talk about, uh, you know, the politics of everything happening this week, uh, certainly. But in the midst uh, of this shooting, just a, a lot to wrap our heads around and a lot of concerns generally. Mike, I'll come to you next. Mike Murphy, former state representative, a lot of concerns generally about political violence in this country in 2024 and, and now this uh, apparent assassination attempt in Pennsylvania. Well, you're absolutely right, Dan. You know, both sides have been guilty of hyperbole, uh, you know, um, incitement to uh, if not physical violence, certainly hatred. And I think this hopefully is a wake up call for everybody on both sides just to dial everything back about 100 degrees. Um, but Trump himself now really joins a pantheon of, of two other very well known assassination attempts in the, in the United States history. One is Ronald Reagan in 81, but maybe even more on point is Teddy Roosevelt, who was getting ready to give a speech in Milwaukee, actually. And uh, a, a gun was fired, and the bullet actually went through his speech, and and somehow, you know, was either deflected or, or absorbed some of the shock. And he was his shirt was full of blood, and he insisted on going forward with a 45-minute speech. And so, Trump's uh, you know ability to get up and to wave his fist and uh, walk to the SUV was uh, incredible by any human being who'd just been shot. And we don't know, uh, you know, many of the implications of this moving forward. Uh, obviously, the RNC is scheduled to start on Monday as we record this Saturday night. We don't know how that may or may not impact the proceedings. Tony, you're scheduled to be there uh, this week as a delegate. You're also Tony Samuel, the former 2016 uh, vice chair of the Indiana Trump campaign. Uh, what are you hearing? Are all plans uh, still on, as far as you know, uh, for the convention on Monday? Uh, yeah, it looks like they are. I just checked and just got an email uh, from the state party um, and looks like our trip is still, you know, as was planned. We leave Sunday morning. We'll be there all week. Um, you know, we were all excited. Now we're all, uh, you know, uh, horrified that something like this can happen. But but I, I'm sure everyone in our delegation um, and, and everyone at the state party wants to be there, wants to support President Trump. You know, he's about as strong a person as we've seen ever in, in, in politics, um, and especially now. Um, you know, Mike mentioned Ronald Reagan. The, the picture over my shoulder is a, a picture of Trump meeting Reagan at the White House back in the 80s. And of course, um, you know, as Mike mentioned, Reagan um, had the assassination attempt on him. You know, as far as Trump supporters go, I might just want to say a few words on their behalf. You know, we, we love President Trump. We support him. We stand up to a lot of uh, negativity uh, that does need to be dialed down and needs to go away on, on, on both sides. I agree with that. But this hatred toward President Trump, you know, we all have felt that this could lead, that hatred could lead to something like this. And it has, and it's unfortunate, but he's gonna stand strong. He's gonna keep fighting. I think when he did the the uh, the fist pump, uh, as, as soon as he stood up and as he was leaving the stage, 
that was a signal not just to the crowd there but to all of america that he's going to keep fighting i think those were the words coming out of, out of his mouth was to fight and keep fighting that's what he's going to do and he's doing it for the country you know I, I always say on this show every every week that i'm on and we talk about him that it's the policies that matter it's what he was doing for the country what he's going to do for the country again okay. he's like a you know a superhero to some and he's hated by some but but it's the folks that want to change the country that that are, are trying to tear him down and keep him down. It's the folks that love uh, America and that are uh, traditional uh, American uh, you know, American patriots that uh, that um, support him and will continue to do that. Okay. I've got a T-shirt on that kind of says it all, and I'm going to show everybody. I, I had bought this quite a while back, but I was wondering what I was going to throw on today, and it was it was appropriate, I think. Um, he's a tough uh, he's a tough person. He's a winner, and he's going to keep okay. fighting to win. For this country. Okay. La Laura Beck, Democratic strategist, I want to turn to you here as well. President Biden spoke to the nation a couple hours mm -hmm. after this incident happened in Pennsylvania. What did you make of his response amidst everything that he has uh, dealt with here this past week or two since the debate? It's hard to even wrap your head around where this race mm -hmm. goes next. What, what did you make of his immediate response on Saturday night? Well, I think his immediate response was absolutely appropriate. I think actually it was really incredibly good. It was heartfelt. He's already tried to call. I mean, he had he's already tried to call the, the, the former president because um, at the end of the day, yes, you have differing viewpoints, but you're people. And I think that's incredibly, incredibly important to get across. And I think the president did. I think they're going to get to the bottom of what happened and they're going to find out and they're going to make sure that um, people are are protected at rallies. I, I think one of the things that really stands out to me, and I think we, we cannot lose this, is that an American citizen went to a rally today to show their support for their preferred candidate, and they were killed. And that just should not happen in our country. You know, it is terrible what happened to President Trump. We are, former President Trump, we're really, really grateful that that um, he wasn't hurt worse and he's going to recover and he's going to be okay but but there were regular americans that were in that in that um in that audience sitting behind again person that they support and they were killed for expressing their views and i think that's something that we as mike said it, it, the rhetoric has got to dial down and it's on both sides i agree um and i i just think about that person and their family um and that there's somebody who's not coming home tonight um, because of political violence. And I think that is something that we've got to really work on in this country. Um, when we talk about um, President Biden's response, we talk about um, the investigation that's going to happen. I think we also have to remember, too, that the rhetoric consistently gets worse and worse and worse, worse each cycle. And I mean, we look back to uh, Gabby Giffords, uh, what happened to her. We look at what happened at that um, baseball game with right. uh, Representative yeah. Scalise and, and what happened to him. Paul Pelosi was just attacked in his home. Right. Um, so I think that there needs to be a real reckoning in this country um, about where we go and where we go forward. Adam, I'll, I'll leave it here with you with some final thoughts. As we said earlier, hard to even wrap our heads around where things go from here in this very uh, contentious, very politically charged uh, campaign. Uh, what, what are you hearing from people about what these these next few days and, and weeks may be like on, on both sides of the aisle? Yeah, I mean, I think you will see a, an image of President, uh, former President Donald Trump at the convention in Milwaukee, perhaps bandaged, perhaps not. And he will uh, appear at his uh, ultimate level of strength, that is apogee of strength, uh, having survived uh, what appears to be uh, an apparent assassination attempt. Uh, he will have a unified party. Um, and it's remarkable to me that Trump is physically wounded, but politically bu buoyant. And President Biden is, is politically wounded right now, fighting for his political life as he tries to beat back a rebellion in his own party. And that is the, the backdrop as we go into successive conventions here, uh, first the RNC and the DNC. We'll see where things go from here in the days ahead. Of course, former President Trump uh, will be there at the RNC if everything goes as scheduled with his new running mate uh, as well. We know it won't be uh, Mike Pence, obviously, the former Indiana governor, but uh, a lot to happen here in the days ahead. Adam Wren, Laura Beck, Tony Samuel, Mike Murphy, our, our thanks to you all for being with us uh, here today to talk about the events of this weekend.
Well, coming up next, we're turning our focus back to Indiana and looking at some new numbers on housing affordability in our state and what leaders on both sides of the aisle are saying about the problem. That's coming up next.